Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and I got a few things I wanted to go through this afternoon. I have been down, actually, um, we, we went and shot guns today. We had a, we were doing target practice with guns. I should have uploaded one of the videos, but I shot um, a, many of you have probably not heard, you've, yeah, you've probably heard of it. It's, it's a gun called the Judge, where you can shoot either 45 caliber or 410 shotgun shells out of it. Also shot a gun that um, I got, which is called a six. It's called a six point five Creedmoor, and um, it's a rifle. It's really cool. Then we've got. I shot a. I had a twenty two with a banana clip, just kind of shooting target practice type stuff. Kind of kind of cool. And then uh, my son got to do some fishing. Pretty good day, which is why I'm getting this to you late. Okay. As expected, protests erupt. This is Bond Crip. Protests erupt in El Salvador over government's Bitcoin law. Student associations. For those earning a minimum wage, in one moment you have $300 in Bitcoin. The next day, those uh, those $300 can turn into $50. So I think that this, this kind of points in the direction of any kind of digital currency that you're going to have that represents a country is going to, I would imagine, is going to have to be some type of a stable coin or tied to something like whether it's gold or or um or something that has some kind of value that's relatively stable for i mean that makes sense look i see crypto crypto for me is a highly speculative highly speculative asset class and i am in i've been riding the roller coaster because i think that they're because of the high risk that i'm put i'm taking that I have a possibility of a high return. And that's why I'm investing in it. But that's a totally different thing than a nation's currency. I mean, a nation like El Salvador, that be I see Bitcoin or any of these things as an investment. Now, if you want to talk to me about stable coins that are, you know, maybe that are tied to a basket of currencies or whatever, that's a different thing altogether. And I, and I can kind of see why a, people in a country, they don't want that as their currency per se. I get that. Um, so that kind of makes sense to me. All right. Look at this. It's talking about things that don't make sense. The total, this is from Zero Hedge, the total U.S. debt to hit $30 trillion in six months. And if you look, look at this chart from 2005. Look what this has done since they did bailouts and all this stuff. You see what happens to your world when you when you do things that don't make monetary sense it goes upside down and you get things like negative interest rates which i used to think that our gov I, I used to say what is our government thinking and now i see it differently i think they're doing it intentionally i think they have intentionally destroyed the con economies of the world to roll it into something different i just have my fr fingers cry crossed that it's something different in a better way because these people are pretty sick from what I can tell. Okay. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, if Congress does not act by August 2nd, the Treasury Department would need to begin taking some more extraordinary actions to avoid a default. What in the world? Extraordinary? I, I think what they've what the ridiculousness the ridiculousness that they've done already is pretty extraordinarily extraordinarily stupid okay so anyway enough on that speaking of stupid charlie shrimp bitcoin is the culmination of the principles of the enlightenment where the first are into i need to play some kind of special music when i read this bitcoin is the culmination of the principles of enlightenment where for the first our first time our individual inalienable rights are hard-coded and freely accessible to everyone in the world it's like they're they're dressing up a turd, like I've said before, or a I said and a thermodynamic and stored energy blah 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 blah. They're gonna have to keep dressing it up because proof of work doesn't work. Remember, 
Now, the, Mr. Whale pointed out something that is worthy of making sure we highlight. In 2020, Pomp, Anthony Pompliano mocked Ripple for allegedly selling unregistered securities. This is what he said. Good morning to everyone except the people who thought they could sell unregistered securities and get away with it. Well, now BlockFi, which is one of his investments, the, the, I'm not calling it a Ponzi scheme. That's what Mr. Wales saying. Um, says he directs, in other words, He's an investor in BlockFi. Now the SEC is being targeted, or they're being targeted by top regulators for doing exactly that, selling unregistered securities. Um, so as a lot of people have said, you know, the, the, the SEC going after Ripple, Ripple's fighting for the whole industry. It's not just themselves. Look, if anybody on the planet has egg on their face, it's, or any digital asset does, it's Ethereum. And you better believe the people that are that are Ethereum, Ethereum fans out there, or the people, especially the people that did the Ethereum ICO and participated in that, those people are shaking in their boots as they should be watching this Ripple lawsuit. Because Ethereum, and it's not, look, I've highlighted it a lot, but I'm not the one that brought this up as an issue. Uh, Ripple started pointing to it immediately in the suit as they should. Because it is, it, it means everything. Because you you can't say this about one and let them get away with certain things without that being pointed pointed to to say, wait a minute, how could we have known anything? You you didn't do anything about this. How could we? I mean, how could how could anybody know anything? You're you're not being consistent. So how could anybody be assumed to know what they can and can't do in digital assets? I mean, really, okay. Now, this is where things get interesting because now we're going to talk about PolySign. And up until now, you have not been allowed to talk about PolySign. It's been a complete secret. It's very secretive and nobody has been willing to talk. David Schwartz said they were doing very exciting things. But we just they just now are starting to want to talk about it. So now we can stop whispering and we can talk about PolySign because this is everything in my opinion. Um, digital assets luminaries with, with, with proven leadership in financial services. You know, when I see the word luminary, since words mean things, it reminds me of stellar lumens for some reason. I don't know why, but just does. As we go down here, I want to show you some things. We've we've talked about a lot of these this cast of characters. You'll notice that Arthur Brito still does not have a picture on here. As we go down, I've got I have gone through PolySign with a fine tooth comb over the over time. We've talked about Jack McDonald. We all know about David Schwartz. We know that Ant Antoinette O'Gorman was at Ripple before she before she went to PolySign. We know that Arthur Brito and David Schwartz started the XRP ledger. Um, we know we we've never seen now keep in mind the people that have been on this on on their bench the faces the people that have been shown on the PolySign website until the last 48 hours have been Jack McDonald, uh, David Schwartz, Arthur Brito, Antoinette Gorman, and Tim Keeney. These are new faces. This guy, this guy, and this guy. Let's look at where they are, where they're from. This guy is on the board at Bitstamp. And he's out of Luxembourg, which I find interesting because Ripple spent some time in Luxembourg. We've we've shown you Chris Larson pictures in in Luxembourg on, early on. We've seen Luxembourg. I think it's called Luxembourg Finance House. We've seen Chris Larson there in Luxembourg, and we've seen their Minister of Finance, I believe, come to Ripple headquarters. Now. The other thing that we've talked about a lot on this channel is the fact that this guy was with BNY Mellon, but we've also talked about this guy before because somebody found his name in some of the documents for the incorporation or something. And um, so he's also, I'll show you, he's a ret retired BNY Mellon guy. Not a coincidence, folks. Not. I repeat, not a coincidence. He was with BNY Mellon for 15 freaking years. This guy's retired BNY Mellon. But this guy right here is the most interesting addition to this play this time, or, or since they changed the website, because he, my friends, is with JP Morgan now, and has been for years and years and years, 20 plus years, maybe 30 plus years. Let's see what else he did, Bankers Trust. Anyway, 
He's a JP Morgan guy. So now we know that PolySign has representation on their board by JP Morgan. That tells you a lot. That right there tells me that all the world's a stage. It also tells me, guess who's probably going to be using standard custody? I, I think that, that a, a, a good portion of Wall Street, this is just me talking based on everything I've read, seen, played, talked about. I think that a lot of, I think the reason PolySun has been so secretive is that a lot of Wall Street, from State Street to BNY Mellon to JP Morgan, maybe Goldman Sachs too, or, or, or at least some of them are going to be using PolySign for their instant or for custody of digital assets. I think this is going to be a big part of changing the world. And if if JP Morgan and BNY Mellon are involved with PolySign and two of the guys that created the XRP ledger are there too, what does that make you think about what JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs and BNY Mellon and all the boys, the white shoe boys, that tells me They've been quiet, and and it, it, it makes it 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 makes the fact that nobody has been willing willing to say Ripple or XRP for so long, it makes it make all the more sense because all the world's a stage, folks. Um, okay, then Mel Gibson. I wanted to point this out. Mel Gibson is directing a new film about the Rothschild family and the New World Order. This should be interesting. Um, attacks on Mel Gibson. He's decided to hit, hit the global New World Order agenda by directing a movie about the Rothschild family. These bank... Uh, man, I, I, I had not even read all of this, but geez, man. This guy, he must want trouble. <laughs> okay, I told you guys that I would post the... I, had, I was flipping through a real estate magazine in Jackson Hole when I was there this past week. And my wife, or my, my mother-in-law actually... Um, brought this to my attention. These are the tax benefits of being a Wyoming resident. These are just as a, a partial list that they were pointing out to potential buyers in this real estate magazine. No tax on sale of real estate, no tax, on, no state income, no excise tax, no tax on out of state retirement income, no state gift tax, no inheritance or estate tax, low property taxes, no tax on mineral ownership, no intangible tax. Do you think it's a coincidence that, that the county in Jackson Hole, I can't remember the name of the county, but uh, it, it may be Jackson County. I don't know what it is. But that county is the wealthiest county in the United States. It's not a coincidence that wealthy people are drawn to places with tax structure like this. It's something for some of the people that are listening to my voice should look at. And it's not. it's also not a coincidence that Ripple, this is from XRP Crypto Wolf back in November 2020, Ripple registered Ripple Markets Wyoming LLC. And that too is not a coincidence because look, if you have favorable tax, and this is something that I can't, it blows my mind all these politicians in our country that they can't make heads or tails of the fact, the basic fact that if you have a state and you make it tax friendly for businesses and for individuals, guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna draw more money you're going to draw more wealthy people, more businesses, and everything else. And your state is going to be wealthier than other states that can't figure this out. Uh, this blows my mind all the time about what's going on in the United States and the crazy stupid. Look, it is the dumbest concept in the world. This idea that you can tax people into oblivion and they're not going to react to it. They're just going to stick around. That's why people flee California. They're fleeing California to Miami. Many, uh, Michael Arrington says it all the time. They're fleeing their, all the restrictions and going to Miami to somewhere that's more friendly for businesses. It's common sense. But a lot of these politicians, they can't see the forest for the trees. All right, Michael at VAL 5 Link sent me this article. I love it. Or I, it's interesting. I, I love it's the wrong thing. Elizabeth Warren wants the SEC to kill crypto. Gary Gensler had better not agree. This part down here is the part I wanted you to hear. For the SEC, it is a particularly bad moment to be grabbing for more power. It started during the Trump administration with the bafflingly, bafflingly corrupt-looking stewardship of former SEC Chairman Jay Clayton and his Director of Corporate Finance, William Hinman. They carried out an incoherent regulatory policy for cryptocurrencies where there was no clarity on how the agency determined 
which coins are securities. Their erratic market moving statements about Bitcoin and Ethereum ultimately raised questions about whether their own personal financial interests led them to pick winners and losers among various digital assets. Then came the disastrous lawsuit filed against Ripple Labs the, uh, where uh, the agency alleged that the digital token XRP has been unregistered security for seven years and everyone who ever traded it should have known all along, even though the agency itself had no idea until now. The, the pre-trial phase of the case has been so embarrassing for the SEC's legal team that it has more it, it, it has more laughs per episode than most network sitcoms. A group of 18,000 XRP holders seeing blood in the water filed a motion to intervene in the case against the, the agency that claims to be defending them. The, the judge's procedural rulings in the case seem to signal that the SEC is heading for a precedent-setting defeat that might rewrite the rules for digital assets. It seems that two of the SEC's five commit. Anyway, it goes on and on. I won't read all the rest of this, but it's an interesting article. Seeking Alpha. These guys have, are one of the few, one of the few websites or news outlets at all that are willing to even cover this honestly. XRP Bart sent me this. No, I like this because this is. Uh, I don't know. If, is this from FTSO.eu? Um, but this, is, in my opinion, is what is what has been needing to be done with some of this stuff with the Flare Network, is simplifying it. Um, that I know I speak for plenty of people when they say, it, it's too freaking complicated. For And I'm talking about for average people. It needs to be brought down to the level of 99% of people and not, not talked about to the one percent who are thinking technically because most people don't speak that language and that's why we need stuff like this and this is a good thing i want to show i want to go through a little bit of it um it's it's compare it's comparing this songbird to the flare and then it goes through the purpose the native asset and then uh, th this is an interesting part to me onset supply so with songbird there's going to be 15 billion with an in initial 10 percent annual inflation for stso rewards and then Flare, there's going to be $100 billion with an initial 10% annual inflation for FTSO rewards. Distribution method. This is lays it out, just basic stuff. Airdrop to participants who held XRP on a participating platform during the snapshot on 12-12-2020. And then Flare, airdrop to participants who held XRP on a participating platform during snapshot 12. So that's the same for both, okay? Then the airdrop ratio. So you're going to get um, on 12, 12, 2020, what you had, if you had it on a participating, your XRP on a participating exchange or participating platform um, with Songbird, you'll get 0.1511 SGB for every XR, one XRP held during the snapshot. And then for Flare, of course, you get 1.0073 for every XRP. Okay. So I thought that th this kind of, these, these kind of simplified charts are the kind of thing we need. I think that's a good good thing. Now, I want to make a point here. XRP Vet Diamonds to the Quanti Sky sent me this, okay? This is Hedera Hashgraph. I want you to check this out. The Grateful Dead and Too Short are launching NFTs on the VCCESS Live NFT marketplace using Hedera Hashgraph. Now, here's why this is important. Ethereum has never had any competition, folks. They they have never had any smart contract competition until this year. Once everybody starts realizing that that you're not going to spend all the gas fees to buy these NFTs, this is just that's just one aspect of these smart contract platforms. But once everybody starts seeing this, all of a sudden Ethereum is going to have competition. So the question, and it's going to be better competition. So the question is. Is Ethereum about to be known as MySpace to Facebook? Because I believe that's exactly where this is headed. It's not just going to be Hedera Hashgrab. It's going to be it's going to be Flare. It's going to be Cardano. There are going to be multiple smart contract platforms. And Ethereum, the people over there, they know it's coming too. And you better believe they're nervous. That's why the Mike Novogratz of the world, you remember not too long ago, well, we already know he attacks XRP because he knows Mike Novogratz is not dumb. 
The second that Cardano start, started surging in price and getting people's attention, he started tweeting out things about, oh, I just don't understand why this platform, why, I don't even understand what they have going on at all. I don't understand why the price would be going up. He does that but because of one word, fear, F-E-A-R, fear. That is why he does that. And he's talking his book and he, with fear. So anyway, finally, I wanted to make sure you all knew this. I trust capital, the the largest and the best uh, crypt, IRA platform for investing in crypto, in my opinion, um, has added, oh, I didn't even realize that. Let me hit the refresh button here. I thought I was just telling you they were coming soon. They have added basic attention token, engine and Algorand into the platform, and they are go going to be adding, coming soon, Decentraland. So I've got links to, and, a, and I've got one month free in the description of all my videos. You need to go check them out. Uh, these guys, these guys have it going on. That's a golf ball in case you're wondering. Here it is. I was holding, I'm just holding a golf ball. Nervous habit. I don't even play golf. I don't even know how this golf ball got into my office here. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that I am holding a golf ball while I'm